like to uh, <laughs> be in the uh, Ways and Means Committee because, as members know, we try our very best to start on time. Uh, with the weather, uh, it might be uh, a little bit slow in terms of some of the members uh, arriving. We're close to a quorum, but not quite there yet, so we can't take any action until uh, we uh, officially have a quorum. But uh, if Representative Lincheski is ready to begin presenting the bill, I'm sure by the, within the next couple of minutes we'll have a quorum. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair and committee. I'd like to move House File 6. Mr. Chair, what's the motion that you would like? Uh, well, that it be recommended to pass and placed on the general register, but uh, we can't actually take the motion quite yet. So I'm sorry. So we'll have to wait for the quorum, and then we'll take the motion from you. Okay. Sorry about that. Thank you. And members, um, what this bill is is tax conformity for the, the tax year that's just passed. Uh, members who've been here a little while know these are sort of typical things that happen bipartisanly. I want to start by thanking Representative Davids, who's authored the identical bill um, down to the final sentence. And this, what this is doing, members, is providing the tax benefits that Congress and the President bipartisanly passed at the end of the last calendar year to pass on certain tax benefits to Minnesotans and the rest of the nation. So. If you look at what's in your packet, you can see there's a lot of complicated things going on within the tax code. Um, I think the spreadsheet will really help you understand the complexity of this issue. But a few highlights I think that most Minnesotans resonate with, and that is there's, you know, I'll just talk about three uh, tax items that affect quite a few Minnesotans. I think this bill, if not passed, would, um, if it's passed, it will help about 190,000 filers. And so if not passed, you can imagine that you're all going to have a lot of constituents who are going to be unhappy. So what this bill, kind of the, the three biggies that I think most members will remember these sorts of provisions. First, there is a provision that allows teachers to deduct classroom supplies that they buy for their students as they um, fill out their taxes. So if you're a teacher and you're, you're personally um, using your own resources to fund things for the classroom, we have in the past had a tax deduction for you. Um, that goes away unless this bill is passed again. Congress continued that provision and we need to conform to continue that provision. Another one is we allow folks to deduct tuition expenses when they file their taxes. Without passing this bill or 2012 tax year that's just passing, people will lose that benefit. Uh, another one that folks are familiar with is if you are 70 and a half, you can take your IRA um, you can make IRI transfers to charities and receive a tax preference for doing that. And so if we pass this legislation, folks will be able to get the tax preference, thereby folks will make more donations to charities. A little addition on that provision is that what Congress did is it did something unique that I don't think we've ever seen, and, and maybe Representative Davids knows if we've ever seen it for a different provision which is to say that not only can you make those transfers to charities from your IRA in the calendar of 20 or 12, but you can do them in the month of January of 2013. And we will let you count that as a tax benefit to reduce your liability in calendar year 2020. So Congress has passed all that and 2012, uh, yes. Yeah. Rick Lincheski, uh, we now do have a quorum. Um, and so if you'd like to make that uh, motion and put the bill officially before us. Okay, I'd like to move House File 6. Uh, to be recommended to pass and to go to the floor, Mr. Chair. Okay. Motion is uh, before us, and then if you want to continue your presentation, and then uh, we'll take questions after that. Okay. And so finally, I mean, that's that's kind of it. I was just trying to go through a, th a few big ones that people often think of to give some examples of why we would want to pass this. So now a lot more people have come in, and so I will add that really the, re the reason we're doing this is Congress has passed two major pieces of tax legislation in 2012 that we're now conforming to. This bill says let's conform for the tax year that's now ending. Let's give folks in Minnesota those preferences. We're not solving it for 2013 and 2014 and beyond. Those will be additional bills that would, would be um, looked at for the omnibus tax bill, and they aren't decisions that have to be made today. So why do this now? What, why would we do this now? Why not just wait till May? Because people are filing their taxes right now. 
So if we don't conform, and Representative Davids talked about this on the House floor, many of you will recall, in fact, he made a motion to declare an urgency. The, the urgency that relates is timing. So what happens is if we don't conform now, if we wait till May, you will all, if, you, if you're a beneficiary of any of these provisions, you will file your taxes. Then Sorry. in May, when the legislature passes the bill and the governor signs it, you will have to amend your taxes and file them again if you're one of these 190,000 affected filers. So the, the reason to do it now is to have people begin filing their taxes correctly. We've been able to wait a little bit longer than, than normal this year because Congress has delayed the date of filing your federal taxes to February 1st. And so you know in past years folks can file their taxes right away. This year they delayed it, and that was in large part due to the negotiations that were happening between Boehner and Obama and everybody in Congress to come to an ultimate solution. And so part of that negotiated deal was we'll let folks start a, a month later, which started a few days ago, and we will let people get some of these benefits in January 2013 and count them in their 2012 tax forms. So you know, time is of the essence here. Um, you know, conformity provides simplicity and convenience for taxpayers. There's an additional benefit, which is really not the reason we're here today for timing, is that, you know, we should get this done right now. But additionally, if we get it done before February 15th, and um, it will also be built into the forecast. And so, so the, the spreadsheet becomes part of the forecast. Um, with that, there's one other thing I wanted to mention, and you should have in your packet a four-page, um, does everyone have this? It's called Schedule M1NC, it looks like this. Yes, it was just, just passed out. Okay, so if you look at this, members, just glance at this piece of paper. Um, I think you'll get kind of the point here. This form, which is two pages long, two and a half pages long, this is what our taxpayers have to do if we don't conform. If we conform and this bill gets signed into law, this form goes away. This is a, a part of the income tax that all of our taxpayers will look at and say, oh, these, you know, this, now I have to go through this thing to see if I qualify for any of these things because Minnesota didn't let me do this. So if we get this bill passed, this form be, disappears. And th so that I think this form alone shows people the complexity that's added when we don't conform. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, uh, Representative Davids. <coughs> Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to uh, thank Rep uh, Chair Lincheski for carrying this bill. Uh, I think the form, uh, Schedule M1NC, kind of uh, says it all. Uh, and I did make a motion on the House floor to uh, declare an, uh, whatever we need to do to get this thing done, because I think we need to do it today. I think we should have done it two weeks ago. Uh, and I'm fully supporting uh, what Rep. Lincheski is doing here. and. Uh, Members, there'll be a lot of days where we can have a lot of fun on tax bills, on a lot of things uh, that we <laughs> think should be done. Uh, as I was often told in school when I was misbehaving, uh, Gregory, today is not the day. Uh, and so I would, I would say that, uh, members, uh, today is not the day. Today is the day uh, to pass the Lincheski bill, uh, and it will show that I am, it's kind of making me a bit nervous because I'm being consistent uh, from trying to declare an urgency and uh, supporting this bill unamended today. Uh, and so, members, please don't become confused to think that I'll remain consistent. Um, <laughs> but on this bill, I really believe that this is one we need to pass as is. Uh, I mean, there'll be some questions, and that's a wonderful thing. That's what this committee does. Uh, but I'm hoping that we can get this out of there. But I do have a question for Chair Lincheski. Chair Lincheski, if the House does the right thing uh, and gets this out of here and, and over to a conference committee, what are the chances the Senate will do the right thing? Or maybe we wouldn't even need a conference committee if they did the right thing. Representative Lincheski. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Chair Davids. And first, thank you so much for um, you know, highlighting how important this is and that it's a bipartisan issue for our filers. I don't know what to say to that question. Um, I think that the Senate is... Um, I have heard that the Senate is considering possibly amending some items as it goes through their process. I really hope they don't. I am putting pressure on, and I hope that all members, as we talked about in taxes, will call their senators and ask them not to do that. Um, we shouldn't play games with people's conformity. And I know that you and I have agreed on that, and when you did your conformity bill in 
11, you did the same thing. And so, you know, I don't know what they're going to do. Um, I hope we don't have a conference committee. They should simply be concurring, and I believe they're hearing the bill this week, and then it goes directly to the floor. But what they're going to do, I don't know, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Chair Lincheski, Mr. Chairman. Representative David says, a retired uh, teacher, I just can't imagine you ever misbehaving <laughs> in class. Uh, as as uh, I'm a retired teacher, Mr. Chairman, also uh, retired after, because in 1982 there wasn't any money in the state and everybody got cut. Uh, so I was retired too, and uh, please believe it. <laughs> Maybe you were misbehaving as a teacher. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. no. Uh, Representative Anderson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair and um, Representative Lincheski. I, when you gave us the uh, direction to put pressure on our senators, I sent out an email update to my constituents and asked them to contact, because it's better sometimes if they hear from their constituents the importance of having this tax conformity bill, and glad that you brought it forward so soon. I just wish that we would have made the January 31st uh, deadline, but sooner uh, is better than uh, later. I did have one question. I, I don't know... Uh, uh, Representative Lincheski, if this is for you, or maybe um, Bill Marks, if you can help me uh, find out what fund would the money, uh, I think it's $18.5 million, what fund would this come from? Mr. Chair, I think if um, Representative Rep. Representative Anderson and maybe Mr. Marks wants to jump into it, I think it just goes to the bottom line and is built into the forecast, depending on the date of passage. Of course, if the Senate starts, you know, goofing around with this, I don't know what happens. And... The whole point of this, really, in my mind, there is a benefit of it, you know, first being built into the forecast, but that really is not the core reason to do this. The reason to do this is for simplicity and convenience for our tax filers, but I don't know that there's a direct fund. I think it just drops to the bottom line, but maybe Mr. Marks can add to that. Well, Mr. Chair, I mean, is this, is this going to be com coming out of the... Are we talking about the reserve, the cash flow account, or is this, I mean, is this impacting on payment of school districts? How does that work? Um, Mr. Mark. Mr. Chair, uh, Representative Anderson and members, the, the cost, as shown, is $18.5 in fiscal uh, 13. It's a general fund uh, cost or general fund revenue loss, essentially, so it's a, it's, it's a cost item to the general fund. As to what would happen, it depends on, it depends on what the situation is in the February forecast. If the February forecast is negative, this would increase that deficit by $18.5 million, a deficit that the legislature and governor would have to deal with before June 30th. Uh, uh, and one option, of course, would be taking some more money out of the budget reserve to do that, but uh, that would be one option. If the forecast is positive in February, uh, this essentially means there's $18.5 million less available uh, for distribution uh, in February, under the current law, the first approximately $9 million would go to the budget reserve, and then the next uh, roughly $550 million would go to the aid payment shift, and the next five hundred and fifty million to the levy recognition shift, uh, if, if we got that far. So. Okay. okay. Representative Anderson. Then. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, represent, Representative Lincheski, I might want to work with you on how that gets paid off at some point, so maybe we can have a conversation offline. Thank you. Any other uh, questions? By the way, I, um, for those of you that uh, may remember, uh, and we're going to operate the same way we did uh, when I chaired the Finance Committee, um, <clears throat> my view is that the testimony and the work is done in the uh, committees. Uh, if uh, someone is in the audience at times and a member of the committee has a specific question of that person, we entertain it. But... Uh, the testimony would have, in this case, taken place in taxes. Uh, we'll have a bill up tomorrow night that uh, the testimony would have taken place in Health and Human Services and perhaps some other committees. I'm not sure just exactly all the committees that that particular bill went through, but just as a reminder, that's the way we, we operate uh, in that regard. Um, so if there are no further questions, uh, Representative Lincheski renews her motion that House File 6 be recommended to pass and placed on the General Register. Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. We also have uh, the uh, minutes in the uh, packet. And, uh, Representative uh, Kahn, did you? Uh, yes, I read them and they're perfect. I moved okay. them. Okay, Representative Kahn uh, moves uh, adoption of the uh, minutes. Uh, 
Any discussion? Hearing none then, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Um, now, by the way, uh, tomorrow night uh, we meet uh, at uh, 6 o'clock, and I think it's still in this room, right? Yeah, in room 200, and we'll be taking up uh, Hundley's uh, health care bill. So uh, that's another one that uh, we need to act on for a variety of reasons uh, fairly quickly, and uh, just want to make sure we're getting the uh, – work done that we need to get done and we're moving forward so representative huntley will be before us tomorrow night with that meeting adjourned